podcast world what's up chat building back at you another episode of this life ain't for everybody thank you guys so much thank you girls so much for the audience response to all of the guests that we have been highlighting and showcasing on our podcast our sister podcast the foul life we truly appreciate all of the responses all the ratings all the reviews that y'all are leaving us and it just uh intrigues us to do more and to get more diverse guests on and keep covering topics that y'all are showing interest in one of those topics that we consistently get direct messages and Uh, private messages and email inquiries on is our grilling our recipes when's the cookbook coming out how do you use this traeger what do you do for the asparagus or the the peach cobbler we're always getting inundated with questions about grilling and living off the land and being in the backyard and our relationship with traeger has heightened that um, tenfold and today i have the director of marketing and he will say his exact title but tyler stark has been with traeger for how long tyler uh, four years, man. A little over four years. Welcome to the podcast. This is your second time on it. Last time we were in South Dakota on a pheasant mallard duck hunt combo, but welcome back, buddy. Yeah, man. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Are you, uh, under, we, we got four inches of fresh snow last night. Did you guys get hit with any Western Ooh. storms last night? No, man. It's been 60 degrees and, uh, partly sunny out. So spring is here, at least in, in at least in the Salt Lake Valley up in the mountains, they were still getting snow, but are you going to chase any turkeys at all? It's good. You know, I didn't put in for a Utah tag. I should have, I might see if I can buy an over the counter one, but they're hard to come by out here. I've never had good luck turkey hunting in Utah, have you ever, at least not around the Salt Lake area. Have you ever traveled to turkey hunt at all out of state? Oh yeah. I've hunted Kansas multiple times. Uh, I used to hunt Kansas every year. Last year was the first year and this year too, with the travel restrictions, uh, haven't been able to go. And then Pennsylvania a number of times as well. And Texas, Texas. Yeah. And, um, yeah. this year, probably not because of the new baby. Well, he's, he's eight months old now, but more of the travel restrictions in general, just stuck at home. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I guess like a good drive, you know, did you see Nebraska even went, I mean, they, they, refunded all the out-of-state turkey tags and gave mm-hmm. back nobody can come in there to turkey hunt this spring U- utah just announced that uh, if you're if you're not even in the county you can't hunt in the county unless you live there really so even if i had it i mean i don't know how how much of enforcing it but i uh, dnr blasted it out and it's like well that's kind of weird you know even if i'm in state i can't go to a different county to hunt crazy times huh oh yeah we'll get through it but we are hopefully <laughs> yeah i uh one thing, one thing's for sure is that it has taught me though, how special this life is, right? You know, like the things we get to do and we, I, I think we take it for granted. I mean, just coming to Utah to see you think about going to the airport, getting on a plane, getting off the plane, getting in the car, going to headquarters at Traeger, walking in the door, being greeted, the lunches in the lunchroom, the barbecues, the after parties, the meetings with you, seeing all the family there cooking, doing the videos with it's gone and think about like if we never had the opportunity to do any of that again oh man i don't know i mean i'm getting used to the digital stuff but uh it's just not the same as being able to do it in person and and seeing everybody you know in in a room together i agree it just the things we take for granted like going to a concert you and i were going to zach brown this month Mm -hmm. at the at the no at the end of last month yeah march 26 or whatever he was going to play in salt lake and we would had a great time that night it's just, and I know things happen, but it's just with, I'm just hoping that we get through this a lot sooner than later. I know that you feel the same way. Oh yeah. Well, it, it, I mean, it feels at least here in Salt Lake, it's slowing down a little bit, but uh, you know, we're still under kind of the same stay at home guidelines and I don't know, week four, it's, it's getting easier, but uh, I'm, I'll be glad when this is all done. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping <laughs> that this is the last month of it and we can get back. What are your thoughts on when we do get back? You think a lot of people are going to be hesitant to jump back into mainstream life as far as elbow to elbow, same room you think people, or is it going to teach us to wash our hands more and to be a little bit more respectful if we do have a cold or, or maybe a touch of the flu, not to go into the office and even take a chance. What do you think is going to come out of this? I don't know. I mean, I I think some of the, I think there's gonna be some learnings for sure. I I think a lot of people are gonna be really anxious to get back out there and they they might not be hugging and handshaking as much as they used to. But uh, I I think people will get back to normal pretty quickly. I mean, we're a strong group. And so once people get back into their element, I I think a lot of this will just be, you know, hindsight and nobody's gonna be worrying about till the next one, which is unfortunate, but that seems to be the trend a lot of times. Yeah. And hopefully no, nothing like this. I have never seen it. I don't think anything like this has ever happened, at least not in my lifetime. No, man. I I can't think about anything like you're 10 years older me. than me. So you has anything <laughs> happened in your lifetime? Definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> okay. 
I have some questions. I have some concerns. Not concerns. I just have some inquiries. I have I, I want to get to the point to where people kind of have an understanding of one, why does Traeger change their grills a year ago right now? What what was the main reason? I have my thoughts on it, but I want to hear it from the man. Is it because everything evolves and everything gets better? Or was there something that you guys were saying, our grills are there? Because like the Pro 34 and a lot of the units that we were cooking on a year ago were legit, the original Timberline. But there there were some things that corporate came with last March, and you guys did this launch of all these new products, and, and, and we still have the Pro Series, we got the Ironwood Series, we have the Timberline Series. But what was the main reason for the change of the grills and the design? Yeah, I mean, tech, pure and simple technology. I mean, new technology makes lives easier and better for the most part. And, you know, we had an opportunity to come out with some new technologies that made the experience a lot better and easier for people to use. And our whole message is really about getting people together around good food and making that experience as easy and seamless as possible. So, if, you know, we have the ability to innovate. We're going to continue to do that just to make that experience that much easier and more enjoyable for everybody. So you guys don't really live by the analogy at Traeger. Like if it's not broke, don't try to fix it. It's like you guys are creating some of the best opportunities and experiences in the backyard with the food that these Traegers were doing. Now it's even better. So is your mindset as a brand right now? Are you and Jeremy and Imar and everybody in this little room of scientists and developers and product, de- you know, developers and everybody and saying we can do better than what's out there right now? Oh, yeah. I mean, we always want to improve our products. We want to improve the brand. We want to make everything better for everybody that's part of the brand. And, you know, even here in the next couple of weeks, you'll see some pretty cool stuff coming out from us. Um, and so, yeah, if there's an opportunity for us to make everything better, we're going to do it. And uh, every year, that's our goal. Okay. So the, a couple of the changes, explain to the audience, explain to myself what D2 means. D2 is just a direct drive system. So, you know, it's, it's kind of a play off the, the direct drive and also going to a, a DC powered system. Our, our older grills were all alternating current um, and they work great. They're still fantastic products and many of them are 30 years old and still running and humming along. Um, but what we realized is we had opportunity with this new technology to create a better cooking experience through this DC powered thing. Um, you know, in layman's terms, AC is a simple on and off, just like your light switch with the DC power, you know, for us, it's, it's constant on, uh, it gives us the ability to use the auger and the fan system, uh, at the same time, moving at a variable speed. And so for, simple things like just startup as an example when you have the ability to have the auger feed pellets and the fan go at the same time the grill will get up to speed a lot faster than it would with it going on the alternate system where the auger would feed you'd have a stop and a pause until the fan engaged and that flame would stoke so it's a, it's a much more seamless process um overall when you so in layman's terms if i'm if i'm if i'm describing it or explaining it you have the auger component that is one motor and then you have the heating element that's another motor. So there's actually two different motors or power sources that are, are, are running the grill now as opposed to the old days or the original designs. That was just one with the alternating current. It would alternate back and forth and that might have caused some of the slowdown or the drop in temperature when the lid was opened. Yeah, for sure. Right? There's always been two motors. There's an uh, a motor for the auger and a motor for the fan. But now with the DC system, we can actually run both of those at the same time. So you can simultaneously get pellets fed into the fire pot and have that fan spin at the same time. So you have a much more consistent combustion with the alternating current, your auger would dump pellets in, it would stop, the fan would engage, and then, then it would stoke the flame. So you would see a little bit more of those temperature, uh, temperature flare ups versus now where everything's running in unison. It's just a much more seamless process and the flame ignites quicker. And Wi-Fi and, and Wi-Fi is your version of the app tied in. I love the ability. You see it. I saw Lee and Tiffany post on this. Um, they're coming on the podcast next week. And I saw oh, nice. Tiffany posted the other day of her using her Wi-Fi. This is an, a, a thing to where it almost makes it 
once you turn the grill on, put the food on it, you really don't have to leave the football game or you can really just watch your phone, which kind of takes the some of the ambience on uh, ambient ambiance of grilling out of it. But a lot of people are loving this because if they need to turn the the temperature up, turn it down, if it gives them their 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 internal temperature has been met. Is this something that was worked on for years? Is it is it something that you can is it can that be taken to the next level is there is there anything going on right now to be able to to take that the the wi-fi or make it even stronger than it is right now oh for sure i mean there's always opportunity with that kind of stuff i mean we'll make the the user interfaces will get easier over time with that side of things uh the connection and the capabilities which just with the advancements in in internet and and wi-fi technology going on right now with the invention of 5g as an example you know a lot of that stuff is going to be more seamless and easier to use um you'll see some fun things with what we can do with the grills here coming out i mean currently you know you can take your your app and you can send your favorite recipe to your timberline or your ironwood and the grill will automatically go through the cooking cycle for you so some of those advancements that are already out there will just be improved upon and uh you know we'll layer in some really fun things with the the connectivity side of things as the years go on do you guys even worry about competition does it even affect me it it seems like you guys have taken this wood fired to the next level of sticks but you don't have to stand over the grill you don't have to stoke the grill you don't have to stay on it and then it, there's nobody that can argue the val- the quality and the taste. Uh, do you guys even do you guys sit down and even wonder what's going on out there? Or are your folk is your focus so geared towards Traeger that you don't even know what's going on with the rest of these companies that are introducing wood fired pellet grills or they're trying to stay you know relevant in the barbecue game. No, I mean, you always look at competition. I, I think competition spurs innovation. And so you always need to be cognizant of what's going on out there. But our approach is always to be heads down on the brand and figure out how we can make the best product for our community and and continue innovating on our products. Um, and, and we're obviously aware of what's out there in the marketplace. But uh, I think, you know, our approach is really dedicated to the brand and the community that supports it. And I think that's just kind of one of our biggest strengths. I've never seen a community though. And and I'm not saying that there hasn't been one and I don't think there's been one in barbecuing. There might have, but I've, I just, I can, I can't get it. I can't fathom how much content is being generated daily by the Traeger family in America, just America. I went on to your stories last night and this is just one day of Instagram stories. And I'm going, you've got to be freaking kidding me. And I'm talking from a 60 year old lady in, 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 in Fort Lauderdale, Florida to a duck hunter in Reno, Nevada, to a a dog sledder in Anchorage. You're getting inundated with this content of people that are showing so much pride and exuberation for what they're doing on their Traeger grills. They're telling you when they're turning it on. They're telling you what their marinades do. And they're telling you what their dry rubs doing. They're saying what their company vegetable dishes are. They're literally inundating Traeger and your marketing company with this, this surplus of con. I don't think it's ever happened in, I don't know if any food company has ever had And I know that that might be premature to say because I haven't done a whole lot of studying about it. But but Tyler Stark, you you literally are having to sift through hours and hours of content of this entire community that you guys have built of Traeger backyard aficionados. Yeah, I mean, it's quite amazing. I, I, I'm fortunate. I've never been a part of anything this crazy. And I, I think a lot of the people that work with me uh, would say the same thing. But uh, it's a testament to the brand. And uh, it's great that we can have a brand that's so dedicated to our end users and giving them a platform to share and talk about their creations. I mean, that's one of the big things that we do multiple times a week is highlight what people are cooking. And uh, we truly believe that, you know, the best inspiration comes from our customers. We, we listen to them. Um, we, we take their feedback seriously, not only in the products stuff that we do, but but really try to, to create content for them that helps them become better cooks and, and inspires them to share their food with uh, friends and family. I think that's super important to be that connected to a consumer segment like that. And what a product that you could literally take somebody that might not be Chad Ward, might not be Mark Pitt or Matt Pittman, might not be Benny Kendrick, might not have won the grand, you know, or the Jack Daniels. And they can go into their house with this tray of food and show it to their wife or show it to their husband and their kids and their family and go, look what I just did. And then when they taste it, they're like, man, you, you, you know what you're doing. 
And that is a testament of that product of being able to take somebody that doesn't have a whole bunch of experience that might not even have confidence in turning on a barbecue or lighting, you know, coals or charcoal back in the day or a propane or a gas style um, burner back in the days of those grills. And they're still out there back in the days isn't right to say, but think about the confidence that you've given so many people. And it's, it, it is just a total testament to the product design of making so many people come alive and show their skills of being able to prepare food. Yeah, it, it empowers people. Uh, it really showcases or at least unlocks a, a hidden talent that people maybe didn't know that they had. Um, and once they do it once, they have good success and they want to continue to learn more and go down that rabbit hole of creating different dishes that they probably wouldn't have done in the past. And uh, it just empowers people to have a whole different uh, creative outlet. Yeah, it's crazy to me. When you start talking about the numbers on the grills, explain to the audience what an 850 to a 1300 to a Pro 780 uh, I, I, I think what you're going to say is that it's the cubic inches and the, you know, the amount of grilling space within the grill lid once you open the lid. But is that, is that the case? Is that what that number means? Yep. That's a hundred percent. It's just the cubic inches of cooking surface area. So, when so you, larger the number, the larger the cooking space. Okay. So when I have a Timberline 1300, I have 1,300 cubic inches of cooking space. I have three shelves in there. I have the main one on the bottom, the main, the main level, then you have a middle shelf and then you have an upper shelf. If I put the same exact thickness of a steak on each of those shelves and I fill the shelves with three quarter inch ribeyes all the way across the bottom, middle and top shelf. And I do and I follow the instructions of the Traeger app recipe for a beef steak. Will those steaks and I know that there's hot spots and stuff happens, but will those steaks cook thoroughly at the exact same in that grill. Is that the convection asset of the Traeger grills? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that it's convection power. I mean, I, it, it's a grill, it's a smoker, it, it, it's an oven in essentially. Um, I always tell people, think of it like your oven, it cooks in the same form. You know, s the smoke mode is really a function of just how hot the, the fire is burning. You know, smoke typically only appears in, in temperatures of 165 to 225. And anything above that is you're just really cooking with the heat and you'll, you'll get some flavor. But when you add, combine the convection power where that air is circulating around, that temperature in the grill is the same as at the top top grate as it is at the lower grate. Um, and, and so you do get that even consistent and you can time things to all arrive at the same temperature at the same time if you're cooking a full grill. How cool is that? So the trick or the, 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 the test comes when you're, when you're me or whoever goes to, to Home Depot or Ace Hardware or any of the, the independent dealers of Traeger across the country is, okay, I'm going to put my vegetables on them to get that exact crisp. I'm going to cook them for this long. I'm going to follow this recipe. And then when they get to this point in their cook, I'm going to put my meat on because I want it to come off of the grill at 129 degrees and let it sit for 15 minutes to serve it at 133 degrees at medium rare, whatever the internal temperature, whatever meat you're cooking. I was referring to beef right there. But so you start to tell yourself, all right, now I can put my vegetables on and then I'm going to get my beef on and then I'm going to start my dessert at this time. And then you open the lid by the, by the time you're taking your vegetables off, and you, that's when people get their cameras out and it's like a spectrum of the rainbow of asparagus and radishes and beefs and, and peach cobblers. And I mean, I've seen everything on a Traeger grill. It's amazing. Oh yeah. I mean, you can cook anything. That's the beauty about it from, you know, pies or cookies to your veggies or your steaks. I mean, anything in between it. I tell people too, you know, if you have a favorite recipe that you do in your house and you cook in your oven, you can take that same dishware, that same recipe and it verbatim translates to the, to the grill, which is pretty cool. So you, you work in that office four years, four times 12 is four times, four times 12, 48, 48. is that 48 months? No, yep. is that right? Yeah. God, I'm terrible at math. I'm glad that you're here. <laughs> so 48 months is 48 times 30, however many days that is. And then you take the weekend days off. You guys have, you get to smell Traeger food every day of your work day because you guys cook a lot of meals internally at headquarters. And it's, it's, it's just a testament of what you guys have built. This, this culture is amazing. And I'm very humbled to be a part of it. And I'm very fortunate to, be, to get to experience it at headquarters once in a while. But Nicole and the team up there is just putting food out that is not just, hey, cafeteria food, come get your lunch. It's legit recipes. Are you mm -hmm. sick of Traeger food yet, Tyler? 
No, not yet. I mean, if I, I, I'd get sick of brisket if I ate it every single day, but that's the nice thing is we can cook so many different things on there that I'm not eating traditional barbecue every single day. I mean, even at home, I cook on my grill three, four times a week and we're doing things that aren't traditional barbecue stuff, you know, from fishes to desserts or you know, I did chicken last night for the, the wife and kids. But, oh, wait, what kind? Um, what kind? Thigh? Oh, I just did a, I did a spatchcock chicken. Oh, nice. Yeah. I did the other day. I didn't do content with it, but I used the Thrones on two full chickens, and I'm talking amazing. Those work great. They're they're amazing. Bud Light in there. I don't know if you're a Bud Light guy, but I pour Bud Light into it. You're not allowed <laughs> to say that word at Traeger, I know. But yeah, so you can't get tired of it, and it's just another testament to the product that if you're tired of traditional barbecue, go go on there and get a little cast iron pan and make something that's a, a little bit different. I did mm-hmm. stir fry in mine with mallard duck meat. Right. I got, oh, I got, yeah. I mean, it's, it, it turns out amazing. I, the reverse searing qualities of it. When you start talking about what you just said, you brought up another point of fishes, vegetables, beefs, and chickens and porks and wild game and this and that. Why, why so many different pellet flavors? Why so many different options for a guy to go into his dealer again and see the oak and the cherry and the apple and the signature and the big game? Is there a method to that madness? Is there science behind this? Is it like pairing wine with beef and white wine goes with this and a good beer goes with this, a stout or a light or a dark? Is it the same thought process that a cherry wood is going to make this meat taste like this? Talk to me a little bit about the pellets. Yeah, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, that's the the beauty about the different woods. Every wood has a different smoke profile, actually even has a different burn point. You'll you'll notice in some cases, like a hickory burns a lot hotter than an apple. You know, it's a harder wood. Um, But to your point, yes, you pair ideally you pair your wood to what you're cooking or you know in the case of a lot of traditional texas barbecue for example they're going to use what smoke woods are natively found in the state which is you know your your oak your post oak your mesquite your pecan type woods um but when you start adding some of these other lighter woods like a cherry or an apple as an example those pair really nicely with lighter proteins such as like a fish or a pork or a chicken or even as you do baked goods uh smoke like a mesquite or an oak or a hickory are, are a much harder smoke and so they're better for a tougher uh, protein like a, a red meat a steak a brisket where that protein is a lot more dense and so you want a harder smoke that can get in there and penetrate and give that flavor to the food but i mean you can use your it's, it's really to your taste to be quite honest i mean yeah you typically want to pair a red wine with a steak but who says you can't have a white you know it's it's your it's your choice and your preference i agree 100 percent, and that same goes for the rubs because a year ago i would have been a prime rib rub on a steak with a little bit of a a, a, a tiny tiny bit of fins and feathers and then i'm like i was introduced to a little sprinkle of coffee on it and then now i'm saskatchewan blackened and and it's becoming my favorite. So you take all these different flavor profiles. And if you take a tri-tip out West here, cause they don't have a lot of tri-tips East of the Mississippi, or they don't call it that anyway, but you, the, 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 the options in rubs are kind of the same mindset as what am I going to do today to get a flavor profile out of this piece of beef or this chicken right here? What can I do with this duck meat? What can I put on my asparagus? Is it just the veggie rub? You can, there's a lot of different things that you can mix on some of the Traeger rubs. And that's what makes it so fun is that to the, to the, the beginner, it might be a little overwhelming. I think that it, that what Traeger does better than anything is the education part of it and that content out there and readily available for a person, male or female, young or older, to be able to go in and say, I want this grill and I know that I'm going to have success with it because I have all of this all of this science backing it up and all of this content backing it up that I can, I don't have to be intimidated by 15 different pellets and 10 different rubs. I know what I'm doing. If I'm going to do this chicken, I'm going to get this pellet and I'm going to use this rub, or I'm going to do this marinade, or I'm going to do this brine or this cure, whatever it is. You can do everything on a Traeger. And if you just take the time and discipline yourself to really get ingrained in that app and those recipes, you will turn out food that you would never imagine you turn it out in your backyard. 
Oh, absolutely. I mean, and that's the beauty of all the different seasoning and stuff too. You know, we, we like to give people the the inspiration and the tools they need to create a great meal. But you once you understand how to use the product and how to cook this thing, you can change things up and, and really experiment. And there's no tried or true way to, to what you put on your meat. And, and going back to our conversation earlier about just the, the versatility of the grill, it's like you can cook a chicken five different ways and it's a different taste every single time based on the seasonings, the rubs or the, you know, the, the wood that you use to cook with. And, and that's why a, a person like me that I'm not a professional cook. I'm no, I'm not a, I've never been trained. I've never been educated. I took one home ec class in eighth grade and I have turned out food to where I was like, man, this is unbelievable that I'm doing this. And then I see it to where let's take George Brett. For example, he told myself and Chad Ward, you can't cook a steak on a Traeger and make it taste like a steakhouse. And Chad <laughs> Ward put steak on George Brett's counter in Kansas city. And George Brett threw a cookbook across his room because he could not believe the, the, the quality of what he was eating. And there was another barbecue professional named Mitch Benjamin that was standing there that was in the same boat. Like this is unbelievable. And it was the reverse sear method. We were cooking some snake river farms, which is a very high quality beef, but you don't have to have that high of quality of beef to enjoy a recipe or a beef recipe off of the Traeger. Mm-hmm. But just being able to take guys like that and, and, pers- and not persuade them, but just show them like, look, if you follow this, these rules or follow this in- simple, simple instruction, put it on there at this temperature, close the lid. It's got your rub on there, whatever your taste fl- flavor profile preference is. Open the lid. You, g- you got your grill turned up now. You reverse sear it. You take it off. You let it sit. You slice it against the grain and voila, you have a, 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 a Nebraska Omaha steakhouse quality piece of meat that blows people's mind. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's just, it's simple. It's, it's, it's an eye opener to a lot of regards. I mean, there's a lot of great ways to cook steak and as an example, and, and, you know, a trigger has a really unique way to do it because of the convection cook and you end up with something that's really flavorful and easy and you're not having to wash it as closely as you would with some other cooking devices. And so I think there's a huge benefit for that. And that's a, another reason why people love the brand so much is they have more time to, to spend with their family or friends and they're cooking and not having to babysit the thing. Cause they know it's just going to come out perfect and, and delicious every time. Are there any that blow your mind today is there something lately that tyler stark has has eaten from i know that a lot of guys come through for <laughs> cooking classes instructional classes demonstrations you have john dudley come in you have chad ward there you have you have a lot of different personalities come through that place um frazier the the four-time four-time crossfit world champion he just won his wife is what's her name excuse sorry sammy sammy is a stud and her recipes are awesome is there anything that you've tasted lately to where you're like, whoa, like just blown away again, even after you've been at Traeger four years? Uh, you know, n- yes and no. I mean, I, I, I'm fortunate that we get to meet some really cool people and see some really cool talents coming through. But I, I mean, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm as much as I can keep, say I get sick of barbecue, I'm still a sucker for a really good brisket. Um, and, you know, when Matt Pittman comes to town and, and cooks a brisket, I, I have to try some of that. It's just one of those things that when done right, is just so amazing. Uh, and it's he's a stud. And when you watch these guys that can do a brisket the right way from the cap and the fat cut off and the preparation of the piece of meat before they even think about putting the rub or the flavor on it, you, there is so much to learn. And I think that that is why chefs or, or barbecue champions, they, they kind of, they have this aura around them. Like they're, they are literally like world champion athletes. You know, they're like at the highest of their game because when you watch Michael Jordan dunk a basketball, or shoot a basketball, it's unlike anything in the world. When you, me and you, or you and I go to play basketball at the local gym, it's not like that, but we have fun and we can do it. That's kind of like me up against Pittman or a ward or somebody on a Traeger brisket is that I can do it and I could cut it up and I'm going to make my, my family and friends go, man, that's really good brisket. But the, the, there's a next level. There's a next level to this to where that is what's cool about Traeger too, is that that next level is readily available to anybody that buys their Traeger today at their local dealer. And that's what's so awesome about this is that Matt Pittman doesn't have any secrets. He might. I'm not saying that Matt's going to give it all away. But you can go on or you can contact these guys directly and they are going to share. I don't know how many times I've heard, 
I text Chad Ward last night and he wrote a big long, I've never seen Chad <laughs> Ward not give away a recipe or, or a way to be successful in this. And that's what, yep. that's so awesome that this Traeger family and community is like, yeah, I've won the Royal. Yeah, I've won the Jack Daniels, but here you go. I mean, I've cooked with the road cookers down with Doug and his wife down in Texas and their chicken, like literally I could never make chicken taste like that. And then you know what I did? I was like, man, I'm close. They, but I couldn't have done it without them telling me what they did. Right. Yep. Yeah. You may not be able to do it exactly like it, but you know, just like they did, they learned from trial and error and they've perfected their recipe over many times. And once you get the basics and you start doing it and doing it again, you'll, you'll eventually get there, but your first couple of times are going to taste damn good and you're not going to regret anything. So no, no regret at all. <laughs> what talk to me nope. a little bit about Benny Kendrick. No, what about him? He's, he's amazing, man. I know he's been on a lot of hunts with you guys and stuff before. He loves hanging out with you guys at camp. I mean, he's one of the most down to earth guys out there, self-taught, but creates some of the most amazing recipes that I've ever seen. So unassuming too. Like when you look at Benny Kendrick, you're not going to, you don't look at him like, man, he's going to be tough to talk to. That dude looks intimidating. Then he's just like this little, like, bear like cuddly bear that you're just like man you're the sweetest dude in the world and then he gets on the grill and he is an absolute freaking savage like he just puts stuff oh, yeah. out from breakfast to dessert that is is amazing i mean he's 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 throwing out some insane content yeah Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, and like I say, he's like I say, he's all self-taught and he just likes to experiment in it. And that's the cool thing about cooking and what I think Traeger inspires people to do is just the ability and the confidence to experiment. You don't have to follow a recipe to a T. Try something different. Add your flair or twist to it. And uh, Benny really epitomizes that where he's just constantly trying new out-of-the-box things, different flavor profiles, different types of meat, putting things in different dishes that you normally wouldn't think. And uh, that's why he's so good at what he does. Do you, do you think that they're... I think we should have like an inner Traeger barbecue world championships at headquarters. <laughs> you go, I mean, I'm serious. Like this could turn into something to where you have these people that you're going to give, you know, have the confidence to where, yeah, it's going to be fun, but I'm going to be competing against Matt Pittman. I don't have to travel to Kansas city to do it. I'm going to do it at this Traeger event and I'm going to go up against these barbecue guys. I wonder if the barbecue guys pride would be the one where they wouldn't enter the contest because they'd be afraid that, that somebody like me or somebody would beat them. And then they would have to hear about that for the rest of their career. Are their egos that big? Are there egos in barbecue? No. Tyler? Oh, there's egos in everything for sure. But, you know, I, I think they love the challenge. I mean, and to, you know, they're almost like athletes in a sense, like they, they, they live to compete and challenge each other. And I, I think that's something that keeps it exciting for them. You know, they wouldn't go to competitions if there wasn't that element of, oh man, am I going to lose or am I going to win? It's that thrill of the game in a sense. I think I wouldn't, I would like to try that just to see how bad I would get beat, you know, like you, th cause you think <laughs> that you're there and then you're just, you, you watch these guys work and you're, you're like, I can do that. You see their videos or their content, but until you taste the, the, the food that they're putting out, even like Diva Q, she is a stud with, with content, but her recipes and her championships, she's a competitor. What, what does she, oh, yeah. what does she have that's special? She, she's just got an insane drive and she, she's a chef through and through. I mean, her specialty is obviously the barbecue thing, but I mean, she's won over 400 barbecue competitions. She's got two best selling cookbooks out there. I mean, and she, she truly knows that. I mean, one of her favorite things to do on the grill is, is desserts, which, you know, I'm, she's a, a master baker on a grill, which is pretty hard to, to come by. And then she can cook a badass piece of meat too. So, uh, it's just her drive. It's her dedication. And, uh, she really just honed her craft. Do you think Chad Mendez is good on a Traeger or do you think that he just intimidates people and just bullies them into making them <laughs> say his food tastes good? I don't know. I, I've, I've had a few of his meals. He's pretty damn good. He's probably going to listen to this too, so I can't talk too much smack. So you, but, uh, really? You can't talk smack <laughs> about him? No, no, I do. How awesome of a guy is Chad <laughs> just Mendez? Just to his face. How awesome of a guy is oh, Chad he, Mendez? He's the man. He's the man. Henderson? Oh, Hendo's the man too. Uh, you guys got people cooking on your grills that Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top, they brag about the Traeger, Tim Montana, Ken Griffey. Isn't that crazy with the grill? I would have never imagined a grill brand would attract such amazing people and a roster of such talented folks, diverse folks. But I too, don't think, I don't think that it's talked about enough of what it's doing. I, I am, I'm not saying that I'm a marketing master by any means, but I've never seen anything like it. Like you have, Hall of Fame, Rock and Roll Hall of Famers, 
You have Major League Baseball Hall of Famers, first ballot Hall of Famers, two of them that I can think of off of my head right now that were first ballot. You have race car drivers, current athletes, musicians. You have I don't know how many, you know, nine to fivers and doctors and truck drivers and all of that. You have professional barbecue guys. You have athletes. You have hunters and fishermen. You have outfitters. How does it happen? How did it happen? What was the – because Traeger, here's what's key. If you ask most people that are, are watching, you know, in the Traeger community right now that, that are just that – aren't, that aren't in the know of the history – I would bet you that a lot of people would say Traeger has only been around for 10 years at the most. Is that fair to say, you think? I, I think most people probably heard of the brand within the last five, 10 years at most. I mean, in, in reality, we're a 30-year-old brand, but the passion for the brand has never died, which is the coolest thing. And that was really the selling point for, for this company is how passionate the users were. I mean, if you... It's still to this day, go up anywhere in the Pacific Northwest. I mean, people are still cooking on grills that from the 30 years ago when the brand first started um, and word of mouth and they, they just love it. The product idea hasn't changed. Um, you know, I think we've got a really amazing team behind the brand now that uh, is one really good at creating innovative products and making sure that that experience with the product is top notch. But then on the back end, you know, we're really about culture and community and creating these positive, long lasting relationships. And when you can really build a, a friendship and make people feel part of the brand, I think it just starts spreading organically, which is really what has happened in the last couple of years. Um, yeah, we've got more marketing out there, but um, it's just a really strong team that is all moving towards a common objective. And, and that's really the success that we've seen. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, any company in the country that you go to and talk to their marketing department would have an idea of what you just said. But something happened in this community that and I think it has to do with the information being readily available and so shared across the spectrum and making every individual feel like they're on this team. There's no ego when it comes to – there might be ego between a Pittman and a Ward when they're competing, but when it's time to share, it's almost like they, they value their relationship with this brand called Traeger so much that they are willing to say, hey, we want everybody to experience good food. There's no reason not to. Um, something is different, though. There's something about the community and the culture of Traeger that has been driven by yourself and Jeremy and Imar and, and Danny before he left and the, and the current team that's there that is on a different level of culture. And I think that that's one of the most important things in a brand is creating a culture that people want to be a part of. But once you get them in there, there's also a such thing as pulling the wool over somebody's eyes to get them in there. And then once you have them and they spend their money with you, that's the end of the experience. This experience never ends. Today, a Traeger guy that bought his Traeger three years ago, which is 36 months, Tyler, a guy that bought his... <laughs> He can go on and get new, updated, innovative information right now from the top barbecues in the world, from hunters, from race car drivers, from people that that he had no he has no friendship with. He's never met them, but they feel like they're part of this team because of the social media and the interaction and all the pride. Hashtag Traeger Girls. Hashtag Traeger Nation. Hashtag Traeger Day. Something is different about this culture because it's it has not happened in a in a lot in a lot of the things that I've seen in the hunting industry and in the barbecue world, I don't remember anything in the barbecue world that made me want to be a part of something so much. I remember the old Kingsford commercials with the charcoal briquettes and, and they were cool, but nothing has ever made me want to be a part of something and just help out other people and then not be afraid to reach out for help when I need it. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that's the key. I mean, just the accessibility of everything and even all the ambassadors, whether you're Benny Kendrick with a couple hundred thousand followers, he answers every question, every DM that comes through about how he's doing something, how to do it. Danielle at DBQ is the same way. Somebody reaches out to her. She's never met him, but that's the power of social media and the power of these people being so willing and, and invested in and helping others succeed. I think that just lifts everybody up and, and makes them more dedicated to the brand and the, the, the movement behind it. And um, that's kind of what we've been doing doing as our mission is really bringing people together around food and, and giving them the tools and resources to do that. How much, you know, what did you guys take as a company? I was watching reruns of the foul life this last weekend because I was, I was getting some musical information for some people on some tracks. 
the the commercial that y'all produced about a year ago, and it's hilarious, and it's the one that's you, you know that tastes like gas. Oh yeah, <laughs> but when you hear it, it's so well done. We all we all have a good understanding of what people are thinking that they're saying. With the family structure of Traeger, did you guys take some some shortcomings over this commercial? When people did did anybody get too pissed off about what was being said in the commercial? I, I don't think so. I mean, you know, we've always thought about you know we always want to be politically correct, I guess, if you, if you will, that's a probably a poor choice of words for this, but I think any good brand that uh, toes the line, uh, and that keeps things exciting and keeps people engaged and, and differentiate you from, you know, the co competition, you know, uh, we want to be fun. We want to be a little bit edgy, but also, you know, family friendly and, uh, that keeps things interesting that keeps people engaged, uh, from all walks of life. And, um, yeah, I mean, not, you're not going to please everybody at the end of the day, but uh, overall, everybody loved that commercial. And, um, you know, we still like to have fun with our content, you know, that's part of what makes our branding so unique. I think it is too. And, you know, I, I, I try to turn in as much content as I possibly can. And you see a lot of it on our stories. And I see it getting to where hmm. there's just so much fun had around it because you're, 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 you're in the moment. You're like, that commercial is kind of the, the same way that every backyard is, is those guys calling each other. Did you taste this? It tastes like, you know, that's how this community is, is like, we're not ripping on any other forms of cooking. We're not looking down on any other barbecue companies. We're not saying that this grill is better than yours or any means. We're just saying, here's our community. Here's our culture. Here's what we do on a daily basis. I don't know if you saw the, the, the shish kebabs we did the other day with wild sheep. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, Jim Ray was being hilarious. I'm like, do I set it at 400? And he's like, yeah, unless you're shaking. Because if you're, if you, you know how, you know how timid the, the knob is sometimes and it, it'll go to 405. That's a funny ass freaking joke. I mean, I'm just like, man, that's freaking hilarious. So I just see people getting so not just innovative with their cooking and their recipes, Ty. Now you're getting these people that are actually coming out of the woodworks with strong editing and production and music behind it and, and, and hashtags and graphics and animations and all of this stuff. It, this culture just continues to grow. Oh yeah. No, I mean, that's what's, that's, that's the fun part of this is it's really seeing what people get creative with and, you know, the videos that users submit to us, like people put a lot of time and effort into it. And, uh, one, we want to showcase that and it just, two, I think it's just fun. It just, we can't ever take ourselves too seriously. And if you're not having fun, there's no worthwhile doing it, you know? So what are you, is there anything that you can let out of the bag right now when it comes to fun that we have to look forward to, or is it hush hush right now? Depends when you plan to launch this. <laughs> um, you tell me when to, and I will. Uh, next week, if you want to, it has to be after the 14th. Hold on, I'm looking on the calendar. <laughs> okay, today's the 6th. I will not launch it until after that. So that's uh, one week from, is that one week from tomorrow? Yeah, as long as it's not launching until after the 14th. All right, talk to me about some stuff. I promise I give you no fingers crossed. <laughs> I would never do that anyway. Cool. Well, yeah. So yeah, if we're, if we're, if we're not launching this till after the 14th then I'll, then I'll share some stuff. Cause this will just be fun around it. I mean, you know, we talked earlier about just the technology on the grills and the benefits of Wi-Fi, and, you know, one of the, the neatest things about having a connected grill is, you know, somebody that bought one say last year when we launched it, it's been constantly improving every single month. We're launching new updates every single month to improve the efficiency of the grill, but it also allows us to test some things, but then also release it to the masses as well. So one of the cool things that's coming out for the connected grills on the 14th here is uh, that all Wi-Fi grills, Pro Series included, can now go up to 500 degrees. And the user doesn't have to do anything as long as their grill is on. It will update the next time they turn it on if, it, if it's off currently. But uh, they'll now be able to get 500 degrees on all their grills, wow. which is pretty amazing. And that's all done uh, wirelessly. Um, you were privy to this a little bit just because you'll be featured in it. But, uh, you know, our new app is going to be launching uh, next week. Um, and so, you know, as part of that experience and things that we're talking about is really giving people the ability to access talents like yourself. So like Diva, you know, D Dennis Prescott's Matt Pittman's of the world and really get a much more high level insight on how to do a recipe. So yeah, we'll still have the text recipes, but we've gone ahead and taken those videos that we've shot with you as an example. And we've broken out video step by step. And so the new app is going to come out and it's just a, a much more content rich experience. It gives you even more resources, not only from how to do a recipe with a visual 
of each step that's being done, but also to things like tips and tricks. Like you did a great segment on, on field knives and what knives that you can use uh, in the field or in your kitchen and, and the variety of uses behind each style of knife. You know, we've got tips and tricks on how to make basic marinades to how to make different sauces, things like how to slice an onion like a chef. Um, all that kind of content is going to be there and continue to grow and grow and grow. And so the app next week on the 14th is going to be uh, just a much greater resource for people. You know, we're constantly adding the recipes. We're up to, I think, over 1,800 recipes currently on this app. Uh, but now when you layer in the tips and tricks sections, uh, we're just giving people more resources than ever uh, at, at their fingertips, literally. Wow. So uh, you're going to be able to... As of next Tuesday, I can go onto my Pro 780 and get 500 degrees for a reverse sear on it. Yep. Yep. Starting on the 14th, uh, your grill should update and uh, you'll be able to go up to 500 degrees on your Pro 780. Dude, how cool is that? Yep. And, and that's the benefit to the, the technology is we can constantly iterate and constantly give people new features that weren't there when they first bought the product and continue to enhance the life of that product and, and continue to add value on it. What is the status on, and I don't know if you can talk on this, is one of my favorite things to do is take a, a piece of red meat or anything. I've done it with pork chops. I've done it with chicken chicken wings and, and reverse searing them on the cast iron um, skillet in the Ranger. Is the Ranger oh, yeah. coming back? Is it going to be available again? Is Was it ever not available? Tell me a little story on the on the Ranger. Oh, Ranger, Ranger's back. It's, it's shipping. It's, it's still one of our, our most popular grills. I mean, I think the popularity of it took us by surprise a little bit when we launched it. And, uh, yes, we did have some recall issues, but those are completely resolved. Those were two years ago. Um, and everything's been fixed and great since then, but, uh, the popularity of them is overwhelming. Um, and they're, they're fantastic for, to your point, searing, but, you know, even just throwing in the bed of a truck or your camper and going out and, and you have that cast iron grill, you can do pancakes for the kids. You can fry scramble eggs or fry eggs right on the, the grill. Um, it's, it's a really neat portable piece. And, uh, I think the size and just the fact that it doubles as some of these different cooking stations in the sense. I mean, I know so many people that have that as a separate cook station where they'll have their big grill going and it's smoking a bunch of stuff and their ranger on the side and they're searing pieces off and serving it right to people yeah, as they walk that's exactly by. How we do. Um, yeah, it, it's a really fun product and it, it's, it's available. It's shipping now and it's perfect time, especially with all this social distancing, grab one and get out in the middle of nowhere and enjoy some good food out in the woods. How, how hot will a ranger get? Oh, I mean, it gets up to 450, but I, I honestly, it's such a small cavity that that thing gets raging hot so fast. And then with that cast iron skillet in there, uh, or the griddle, I should say, uh, you can sear just about anything really quickly. How important is the grease release on the Rangers, any grill for that matter? And and talk to me a little bit before we get off of here, Tyler, on their fun. Their, the pride in these things, what I love also is that it's almost like the Traeger has become the new sports car. It's not a midlife crisis, but it's the new sports car. It's, hey, this we're not done. This thing's not cleaned yet, you know? I mean, I'm talking like people are, you know, changing out their drip pans. They're, they're making sure that their grease traps are clear. They're making sure that the debris off of the grill, um, you know, things are seasoned in there. It, it, it's, it's, it's making the food taste great. But when you open up a lot of these grills, when, when Skidmark or Benny or anybody comes and they bring their grills remotely out onto a hunt camp or when I'm at hunt camp and there's grills shipped in and we assemble them, after that first night cook, we go back to the next day and they look brand new again. And and I think like when I go to honey break, I tell Drew Keith that all the time. It's like when you wake up in the morning to go out on your hunt at honey break, you get into the Polaris. It, they, it looks like they have brand new Polarises every day. It looks like they're just Polaris is just shipping them every day for their clients. And th that's the attention to detail. And that's what this Traeger culture and community is doing. Like the Traeger is the new sports car of like, man, it's not a status symbol because you don't have to be a millionaire to have a Traeger. There's different levels of them. You can get into a Traeger very affordably. But the pride that they're taking in them is like that 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 guy with you know with his sports car, that girl with her sports car, washing it every day after they drive it five miles. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, there's part of that too. Just like it's just the overall performance of it. I mean, if you're cooking everything, like Benny is an example, or Skid Marks an example, when you're cooking tens of twenties of pounds of meat at a time and cooking day in day out at that thing, you, you do need to keep it clean. And it's, it's purely just to make sure that it's running, uh, 
properly. You don't want grease built up to start a fire by accident. So you got to clean that out. You know, simple things like just vacuuming your grill out every two to three bags makes a big difference on how hot the grill gets and how quickly because, you know, eventually ash starts building up and it limits airflow, which, you know, if you have too much ash in there and not enough airflow, your flame's not going to get hot enough. And so there, there's a, a performance angle to that too. And I, I think, you know, you're, your analogy almost of like the ATVs, uh, honey break as an example, they're using those things day in, day out. If you just start driving that around constantly caked in mud and crud, you'll eventually have breakdowns with stuff. Um, and so keep the, keeping those clean is, is super important, but I also think it is a, a source of pride. You know, it's nice to walk out there and see a shiny piece of metal sitting on your back patio. And it's, it's a point of pride, you know, you want to take care of the, the nice things that you've got. And so I think people really like that, you know, it's an investment regardless of what price point you buy at and uh, pride of ownership is definitely a big thing in our community. Yeah. And I think that people really need to, you know, the accessories that are out there are, are, are not something that's just Traeger going, oh, well, now that you got this, you probably should get this. I mean, the covers, the insulation blankets, all of the shelves, all of the hooks, hang hooks and everything, all of the utensils. And I know you guys are getting ready to do some stuff in that market, too. We can talk about that at a later date. But I, I think that if somebody really looks at the options they have, they can outfit this again like their sports car and they can make it as legit as they possibly want to make that experience that much better. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, the options are endless. I think that you guys do an amazing job. And you got anything for me? Any questions for me? Is there anything that you see us doing to where you're like, what is Belding doing with the, with with this on the grill? I mean, what's going on with this this duck calling? Is there anything that you, you want us, us to change? Are you happy with what you see coming out of this camp? Talk to me a little bit. No, man, I always have fun. I mean, I'm a big fan of your content and obviously we're friends now, but uh, I was a fan of what you've been doing before we started, uh, you know, working together. Um, and it's always fun seeing what you guys are cooking. I can't believe how much you guys are cooking on these things. So it's always fun to see what you've got going on or who you've got hanging out at the house or in camp with you. And uh, it just keeps things exciting. You guys are amazing content creators. Well, thank you very much. And you know what I'm excited about? <laughs> Our boy, Brett Cannon, who I introduced you to, just sh- yeah. just just took me up with some mahi some yellow fin tuna and some um swordfish steaks so i take this Ooh. i took this yellow fin tuna big red just unbelievable beautiful pieces of meat and i sliced it about a half inch half inch thick maybe a little less than a half inch and i took a little tiny bit of fins and feather on there and i took a tiny bit of lemon and squeezed it on there and then i topped it with a little tiny bit of tony chasseries and I got a cast iron and all I did is I took it and I took a paper towel and I coated the cast iron with a little bit of oil because I don't like putting a lot of oil in the Traeger and I don't think anybody should but I just coated it and then I took a little tiny bit of real butter and I put it in there I reverse I didn't reverse sear it but I seared it just for less than a minute on each side I had the grill at 400 touched it flipped it touched it took it out sprinkled a little bit more of the lemon on it. And then I took fresh green onion and chives and put it over the top. Tyler Stark, I'm telling you, like, sounds amazing. It was never even froze. It was shipped to me overnight with some dry (laughs) ice, stayed thawed out. And I ate it fresh. I was like, this is the, this is the only way to eat. This is how you eat right here. This is the best that you can possibly get. And he caught it that day before he was sending me videos of him and his dad, Rob on the boat, reeling these in. And then I was eating it the next day. Oh this my gosh, country that's is amazing, amazing that we live in, dude. <laughs> I get so fired up. About fresh it. Fish like oh that. my gosh. I'm just like, this lifestyle is the best of living off the land and being a provider. He sent me fish. He caught in the Atlantic ocean off the coast of Southern Florida and sent it to me. And I was eating it the next day. I mean, wow. you just don't get any better than that of the network that this, this, in this community that hunting and the common denominator of hunting, because if it wasn't for mallard ducks and, and chasing mallard ducks, I would have never met you. I would have never probably had a relationship with Traeger. I'm not saying never something could have happened where maybe one day I, I became a, uh, a cookbook guy who knows, but because of hunting, I've got to meet you personally. I've got to sit in your house for the Super Bowl. I've got to be around your wife. I got to meet your new kid. I got to meet your other, I got to meet your whole family, your father-in-law, your, your in laws, your, your mom and dad, because of hunting and this community, I got to meet Brett Cannon. You got to meet Brett Cannon because of all the tie-ins in the network, all because of the same love and passion for living off the land, being outdoors, cooking on a Traeger, cooking wild game. I don't think it can get any cooler than that. I just don't. 
No, it's pretty amazing community, man. It's super tight knit and it's fun to see where all these different relationships lead to. Cause like I mentioned earlier, it's like amazes me every single day that I've been able to meet the people that I, and interact with the people I do working at a grill company. And that's just the power of the brand for us, but also just the, the power of the, the hunting and outdoor community. It's very tight knit. And what I, what I really liked again this week, again, Rogan gets on his Instagram and throws out that elk that he did on his Traeger grill. And I'm like, it's freaking Joe Rogan just bragging about a Traeger grill. And then I've heard him on his podcast bragging about Chad Ward. I've heard him bragging with Steven Ranella. I've heard him not bragging, but you know, just hyping up. And oh, yeah. then he was talking with Bill Burr, the comedian from Boston about, man, you got to get a Traeger. You got to get a Traeger. And Bill's like, Oh, I'll never figure it out. And Rogan's like, no, trust me, you can figure it out. <laughs> so man, I've been yeah. watching this show yeah. on, uh, you know, I, uh, the, there's a show on Inst- uh, Netflix called The Chef Show. Have you watched any of this? Oh, yeah. John it's a great one. I'm yeah, addic- that's a fun I'm one. Addicted. I want to meet him. And I want. Uh, I, I just think that what him and Choi are doing are just... I watched it again last night. Two recipes. One of them was with Bill Burr. They did grilled cheese with Bill, Bill Burr. Have you seen that one? Oh, I haven't they seen did that the Cubano yet. sandwiches and the grilled cheese with Bill Burr. But I've been telling oh, everybody, awesome. like John Favreau, you know, Iron Man and Spider Man, and he did Swingers back in the day and Made and and the breakup and Good Friends with Vince Vaughn. He when he made that movie, The Chef. I love that movie, and now he's taken it and ventured off. Have you seen the movie? I haven't yet. No, I've, I've I know what it is. But yeah, I get the it. movie too. It's it's a legit movie, and then he's just got this unbelievable passion for cooking and barbecue. In the movie, That's in so the cool. movie, they visit Austin, Texas, and do briskets in the movie. <laughs> oh, I'll have to check that out. That's so cool. Yeah, I want to meet him. He just he's just really in, intriguing to me with his passion for it. And that's what like turns me on to people is like their delivery and their passion for something. There might be a little bit of cockiness or arrogance, but that's that's gonna come with the levels that like this chef he cooks with, that 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 dude is on a different level of being a chef. And he you listen to him talk and you're like, man, he's kind of cocky, but he is legit. Like if you read his backstory, that dude has got it going on. Oh yeah, that's cool. It's a good show. Yeah, it's fun. What? Love what it. So anyway, man, I think that this this quarantine has it's it's hurt in a lot of ways. There's no doubt, and I'm I'm praying every day that we come out of it and that businesses and restaurants and bars can get back to open and doing business because I don't want to see anybody financially hurt or any any families put into jeopardy. But it's also given people the time to to be alone, to sit back and understand how good we have it and and how special friends are and how special culture is and community and how special it is to be able to sit in your backyard and have the access to what Traeger's provided in times like this. And we can't leave our homes. It's awesome to have somebody like Traeger there with us with these apps and this content and readily available at our fingertips to be able to make these days go by. I'm getting up more. I'm just rejuvenated. Like I'm going to get some, I'm going to do some recipes today. And I find myself thinking outside the box. I have time to do it. I've been wanting to do things for a long time, but with the hustle and bustle of life, it's almost like somebody said, look, slow down and pump the brakes and concentrate on this stuff for a while. And it will get more well-rounded and everything's going to be okay. Yeah, definitely opens the eyes for people. And uh, to your point, I mean, you definitely take a lot of things for granted, just little things like being able to go out and grab a bite to eat, which is a fun experience. But when you can't do it, you know, that changes perspective on things. And it's like, say time with family and friends is, is definitely overlooked in the hustle bustle. So it's, it, it's reassuring that I think some of those values are going to come back. Very well said. That's Tyler Stark. What is your exact position now? I don't want to miss say it on here. I'm the director of marketing, the director of marketing, Traeger grills, yep. check them out at TraegerGrills.com, Instagram at Traeger grills. Follow their stories. Get ready for April 14th, 2020. The brand new app is launching. You will be able to turn your Pro 780, your Ironwood series grills, your Timberline series grills up to 500 degrees just through technology without you having to do anything. You are able to get the Ranger right now at TraegerGrills.com or your local dealer. Check that Ranger out. It is worth its weight in gold. All the rubs, all of the utensils, all of the accessories, all of the different pellets. If you want to up your chances of producing good food on a consistent basis, get a Traeger. I'm telling you, I live and die by that Traeger. And a lot of times I I impress people that never thought that I'd be able to impress them. Tyler, thank you very much. 
Today, Thank you, man. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Traeger Grills. TraegerGrills.com. You just heard 60 minutes of exactly why we partner with them. We're so humbled to be a part of the Traeger community, the Traeger culture, the Traeger family. Thank you all so much for listening to another episode of This Life Ain't For Everybody. Tom, do me a huge favor. Hit that button. This is our good friend, Leith Lofton, a.k.a. AKA Haas. You can find his new record on all of your listening platforms right now, Taking On Water. This song is called What You Gonna Do When The Money's All Gone, written by Leith Lofton and Drake White. Y'all have a great day.